Hello, welcome to the introduction to proofs video for relations. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to define a relation on A Cartesian product B. You should be able to identify the set theoretic type of a relation. You should be able to represent a relation on a set as a directed graph. And you should be able to check if a given relation is a function. Our motivation for talking about relations is that relations are used to describe the structure between points. So for example, if you're talking about the relation between people, you might say x is older than y. Or you might want to describe the relation people who like x also like y, which would be a way to relate products or movies. For this course, we have another motivation, which is that relations are built entirely from sets and pairs. So they give us an opportunity to practice creating proofs and counterexamples. And whereas the stuff that we did in the with sets was fairly straightforward or algorithmic, when it comes to dealing with relations, we'll require a bit more ingenuity in, in constructing proofs and counterexamples. We start with the definition of a relation. A relation R on a set X is a subset of X Cartesian product X. Now that definition is a little bit dense, so it's helpful to think about what are subsets of Cartesian products. All they are are collections of ordered pairs x comma y, where x and y are both elements of x. So to say that again, a relation is any collection of ordered pairs. Let's look at some examples to help understand this. For all of these examples, we'll take x equals the set 1, 2, 3. In the first example, we have the collection of pairs 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, and 2, 2. This is a relation on x. It is some amount of pairs, and both the first coordinates and the second coordinates are taken from 1, 2, 3. The second example is not a relation on x because it contains things other than just pairs. It contains the number 1 and the number 2. That means that it's not a relation. The third one is a relation on something, but it's not a relation on x. It contains this pair 2, 4, and since 4 is not an element of x, it doesn't count, this whole thing doesn't count as a relation on x. Now let's look at some examples that show up more naturally in mathematics. Let's take x to be the set of natural numbers, and let r1 be the collection of all pairs a, b, such that a is strictly less than b. In this case, 1, 2 is in this relation, because 1 is strictly less than 2. 2, 1 is not in this relation, because 2 is not strictly less than 1. And finally, 1, 1 is not in the relation, because 1 is not strictly less than 1. Here I want to point out that we really are talking about is an element of, and is not an element of, because the relation is a collection of pairs. Some pairs will be in the relation, some pairs will not be in the relation. The relation will indicate all of the things that are related. Now we make a small modification. This is the same as example two. The only difference is that instead of strictly less than, we allow less than or equal to. How will this change the pairs that are in the relation? Well, nothing changes with one, two, and two, one. Those are still the same. But what does change is one, one. Previously, one was not strictly less than one but one is less than or equal to one. So we include it in the relation R2. In general, how do these two relations relate to each other? Well, what you can see is that there will be more relations over in the second one. To put that formally, we observe that R1 is a subset of R2. Every pair that's in this relation is also in this relation. To help understand this, it can help to look at x to be the set 1, 2, 3, and write out everything explicitly. Now we look at the more general definition of a relation. This will be helpful when we try to relate functions to relations. So a relation R between a set A and a set B is any subset of A Cartesian product B. In the previous example, the two sets had to be the same. A and B had to both be the same set X, but in this one, the first coordinate and the second coordinate can differ. 
Let's look at an example. Let A be the half closed interval, zero inclusive to infinity, and let B be the real numbers, and let R be the relation of all A comma B such that A is equal to B squared. Go through now and check which of these five pairs are in R and which of the five pairs are not in R. Going through, we see that uh, this is the answer. Now, you've seen this type of relation before. This reminds us a lot of a function, or really a curve. Relations are more general types of objects than functions. So in this context, A will act like the domain of the relation, and B will act like the codomain of the relation. That won't formally make sense, but it's helpful to think about. Let's see some examples. So using the example we just did, this is the curve x equals y squared. It's not a function. It's not a function because it fails the vertical line test. There's a value here that has two y outputs. Let's look at another example. Let's take x to be the real numbers. So both a and b are equal to x. And the relation R will be all pairs A comma B, where A squared plus B squared equals 1. This is the circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. It is not a function. We can see that because it fails the vertical line test. There is an X that outputs two Ys. Now, when we're talking about um, the vertical line test, we have language that's very much caught in high school and it's very much related to functions. So let's express the vertical line test in language related to functions, sorry, language related to relations. A function is a relation R, which is a subset of A cross B, that satisfies the vertical line test. Think about what the vertical line test should say in terms of a relation. It says, for all A in the first thing, and for all B1, B2 in the second set, if A comma B1 is in relation, and A comma B2 is in relation, then you have to have B1 equals B2. Basically, if an X outputs this Y, and an X outputs this Y, they really have to be the same thing. X's can only output one Y's. Now, what's the negation of this? How would you show that something fails the vertical line test? Take a moment to negate this. So to show that a relation fails the vertical line test, you have to show that there exists an A in A, and there exists B1, B2 in B, such that AB1 is in relation, AB2 is in relation, and B1 is not equal to B2. Reminder, when we're negating, the for alls become there exists, and you negate an implication by taking P and not Q. So that's where the and not Q comes in. Put a little more uh, succinctly, there is an X that outputs two Ys, two different Ys. Now let's look at how do we describe relations in a way that's visual and a way that's easy to understand. So a relation R on a set X is a collection of pairs, X, Y. One way to represent this is by representing it as a directed graph. That means that the elements of X are called the nodes and the elements of R are the arrows. So this is a node and arrow representation. As an example, let's take x to be the set 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's let the relation be this. I accidentally put extra brackets here. Please ignore those outside brackets. So this is the relation 1, 2, 1, 3, 4, 1, and 2, 2. So how do we represent 1, 2? Well, it's ordered from 1 to 2, so we put an arrow from 1 to 2. What about 1, 3? Well, that's an arrow from 1 to 3. 4, 1 is an arrow from 4 to 1. And 2, 2 is the strange one. We represent it as an arrow beginning and ending at 2. 
we call these loops. This gives us a much more visual way of understanding what a relation is. And you can see that if your question was something like, if each of these represented a, a way to like an airplane that would go from one city to another, you might ask the question, can I get from city four to city two? And the picture tells you pretty clearly, yes, you can go this way. But if you were only given these four, it might be harder to understand uh, what's actually going on. Let's end with some exercises and reflections. So the first exercise is take x to be the integers and let r be the relation where a squared plus b squared is strictly less than three. List out all nine pairs in this relation. Second, show that the vertical line test fails for the two examples earlier on in these slides. Three, show that the vertical line test fails for this relation on the set x equals one, two, three. Finally, convince yourself that the empty set and x, Cartesian product x, are always relations on any set x. Let's take a moment to reflect. What type of object is a relation? What is the type of the elements of a relation? How do they differ? How would you explain the vertical line test to a high school student? How does our explanation differ? Write down all the courses you plan on taking in first and second year and organize them using the relation x is a prerequisite for y. What relation and what set is used when creating a family tree? Thank you very much and have a good day.